Um, I wanted to thank AGO and the Youth Council again, and thank Cyrus Ware, and thank you Alex McClellan and Jessica Whitbread, and the international community of women living with HIV, who consulted with Jessica and me about this poster. Thanks for asking me to take part in this fantastic project. And when Jessica and I first met to think about this project, we considered the kinds of representations of positive women that we are really familiar with. Positive women as mothers, as victims, as not from or living here in this place. So we decided, um, uh, we talked about the sentiment of sex negativity that puts, that's put upon positive women and decided we wanted something different. We wanted the work to ask, why aren't women allowed to be subjects of their sexuality rather than objects? Why aren't positive women allowed to talk about sex as freely as gay men? Why can't we express an urgent, horny, powerful, and open message about positive women and sexuality? And when I look around and see the options of chastity, pussycat dollary, uh, toddlers in tiaras, and those kinds of sexuality for women and girls, it seems like we have nothing to lose, so we might as well try and make some new iconographies. So the message... So the message of Fuck Positive Women is a directive, a confident and supportive message meant to relocate positive sexual energy around the bodies of positive women. And when I say women, I am of course including trans and gender queer women, all self-identified women. So Fuck Positive Women can also be read as a declarative, as a double meaning about how positive women, and again when I say Women, I am of course including trans and genderqueer women, all self-identified women. How positive women are fucked when it comes to awareness, visibility, options, policy, and support on the large part. So making this kind of a rude point hopefully contributes to some of the ways that positive women can get unfucked by healthcare and government policies and awareness campaigns. So this messaging is part of a community. Positive women were involved with the messaging for this poster. The International Community of Women Living with HIV, a network of positive women, was presented with this slogan, and they said, yes, do it. We give you our permission. So Jessica and I worked together about thinking about the design of the poster to make the poster an image of a cross stitch, firmly, firmly planting the aesthetic in the domestic, in um, Grammy crafts, in the feminized, in working class crafts, this was intentional. And John Grayson encouraged us to reveal the process of the craft, to leave it kind of undone, so that you see the unfinished plastic canvas and the yarn, maintaining the implications of needles and penetration. So in a conversation I had with Jessica about nervousness expressed by some about the message in our poster, and the concern, that people, um, what is that? What is that? Um, <laughs> okay, nervousness uh, expressed by some of the by some about the message of our poster and the concern that people may think it was made by haters. She said, "If neo Nazis start making their hate literature using plastic cross stitch, then the world may be a better place." <laughs> So, fuck positive women, as the international community of women living with HIV says, this is the kind of messaging we want to have. Messaging that makes a debate, makes a conversation, elicits a response that isn't about apathy or complacency. So, thank you. Well, actually, I want to say thank you, Allison. Because I've been living with HIV for 10 years now, and I've never, ever seen a message like this go out. You know, I have been embracing my sexuality and looking for ways to do so for a long fucking time. And, you know, not all positive women want to get fucked, but some of us do. So, <laughs> thanks for making it a little bit easier. <laughs> all right, who's next?